What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Said It. Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com. Welcome to the Ash Said It daily podcast show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,300 episodes and half a million streams worldwide. None of this would be possible without you guys, so I appreciate you for all of your love and support. The shares and the cares make a huge difference. Why? Because I get to talk to pretty phenomenal people, such as a star of the new upcoming film, The Way Back, the wonderful Charles Lott Jr. Hey, Charles. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, how you doing today? I am doing I'm doing good. How about you? Hey, you know, living life. That's the best way to be. <laughs> so, Charles, let us know, where where are you calling us from? Where are we talking to you from? Um, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles right now. I'm in yeah, LA. Oh, beautiful. Oh, California. Oh, beautiful Los Angeles. What I wouldn't give to get some of that breeze going. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm in New York for the press tour. And mm-hmm. I was, how do people? How do people go outside? Man, it's so cold. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so, Charles, to start off your story, how were you inspired to join the ranks of the Hollywood hot list? Like, what really inspired you to pursue acting? You know, it was crazy because um, you know, uh, I. You know, everybody's story is, is different, and mine certainly was. I never really sat out to be an actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was eight years old, my aunt had signed me up for this talent thing. I wanted to be a football player. Mm-hmm. When she signed us up, um, it was so weird that she did it because I was never known to be an actor. Nobody, you know what I mean? She yeah. just said, you know, just go, you know. I think you can win this thing and do it. And so um, we had said no, and my aunt was like, well, that's too bad because I already <laughs> signed y'all up and uh, they're going to be calling you. So finally, after getting begged, we drove down and we did the talent show. And um, I, I've never seen a script before. I never wanted mm. to act so, so weird to me. <laughs> and um, a week and a half went by later and they called and they were like, well, you made it to the next round. And, uh, you know, you'll be flying out to Phoenix, Arizona. And would mm. you want to go? And my parents asked me and I was just thinking... You know, to miss a week and a half of school? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we flew down there, and, and I acted, and, and for all these people, and it's so funny, because when I was doing this acting the whole time, I'm thinking there's a regular judges to find out from casting directors, agents, managers, you know, I had no idea, and I ended up winning from the age of 6 to 12. I won first place. I, did, I won $10,000, wow. and, um, and I beat out, like, uh, hundreds of kids and I had an agent and I signed with a manager and I came out here which just all happened so fast it's so weird wow that is an incredible yeah, so start <laughs> yeah I never like really wanted to set out acting so for the first few years I've never acted until I got older and then I, I decided to get back into it again mm-hmm. uh, football just wasn't for me I was getting injured dealing with injuries so uh, after I decided to stop Play football, I'm like, you know, maybe I want to get this acting a try. And once mm-hmm. I got into it, I felt so, I felt so dead up because I'm like, how did I, how did I, you know, leave this on the table? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and, and it was such a beautiful craft. I think the craft alone, just getting back into it again, inspired me a lot. Yeah. Wow. So as you were getting back into the craft, into your art, what were the challenges that you were facing? Ooh, um, you know, I think the hardest part for me, for me was that um, when I was a kid trying to do it, uh, you know, everything was just such a uh, handed to you. You got pushed every step of the way. But when I got back into it, I was like 17, 18 years old. Mm. Uh, there wasn't any of that no more. I think I started to really understand what it was like being, being an adult. You know, uh, even when I first booked you know, stuff, you know, nobody was helping me, you know, nobody was telling me when to get up, when mm-hmm. and what to do, what practice your lines, and, you know, I, that was the struggle, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, and, uh, having to make certain choices on your own, yeah. uh, with, even in auditions, uh, having to make certain choices on your own without any help, it was kind of frustrating. Mm-hmm. 
what would you say was your moment of confirmation? That moment that was like, you know what? I am doing the right thing. I'm I'm in the right field. Um, I think, ooh, I think, uh, I think taking certain classes and people mm. would come and talk to my dad and we, you know, would tell him like, man, your son is, your son is so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They would always say like, don't tell him, you know, don't tell him <laughs> that I'm telling you this, but like, your son is really good. If he just stays out here and keep working. He can be something, and so mm. because when I was that, I didn't even think I was that good. So yeah. <laughs> I guess you know my dad only told me because he was like, you know, you think you suck, but you know, such and such, you know, thinks that you really good. And I'm thinking, well, if people keep saying this, I think that I made the right choice. Mm. Uh, so I think it was coming from doing classes and people telling me how good I was. Yes. Wow. So let's talk about this new role, this new film, The Way Back, your co star with Ben Affleck. What is this particular film about? Yeah, um, it's about uh, a, a former basketball player who was really, really good, who had NBA potential, but got caught in the world of drugs and alcohol and a whole lot of mischief. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he ruined a chance on his career. And he kind of known as just this, you know, this hometown legend, this big what if, uh, you know, what if, you know, he put down the alcohol, you know, what could have happened with his life, and so Mm. finally, he didn't know what to do, and so, you know, his own, you know, principal called him in to ask if he could coach a bunch of kids at the high school, Mm. and originally, he was like, no, but after a while, he kind of grows into the idea, and he ends up coaching these kids, and, uh, you know, he's thinking that he's gonna, you know, help these kids but the kids end up helping him you know what I mean in terms of making him a better man because he doesn't want to do certain things to kind of lead by example and um you know it's about you know adversity and, and struggle and addiction mainly and redemption yeah so tell us about your character yeah my character uh, <laughs> my character is um uh, Ron Chubbs Hendricks. I'm the comic relief. Mm. Um, I'm, I am not. I, I won't. I am not no good basketball player. I am not there for no <laughs> I'm there to sit back, relax, be funny, uh, hype the team up. Um, you know, he's been funny. Uh, jumps too much until you know the coach. Uh, you know, have to you know call him to the side and tell him to relax. You know, he kind of has a maturation point in the in the story, you know. Uh yeah, yeah, it's very funny, very outgoing, kind of the life of the party. Um, you know, always in the middle of the circle dancing, having a good time, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The story of the movie is so dark, you know, and I yeah. think that I kinda add uh, some light into it, you know, for mm-hmm. the audience. Gotcha. So did Ben Affleck leave you with any nuggets as far as longevity in Hollywood? Yeah, you know what? You ask it a lot, and it's so hard. Um, you know, it was so hard because yeah. you know, for asking what did I learn? He, you know, when you on set with him every single day, and you talk to him about certain stuff, he tells you so much stuff. It's hard to pinpoint one, but <laughs> it actually stuck out to me a few days ago when I kept thinking about it. And the main thing he kept talking to me about it, uh, is that you know, in a lot of cases, actors we we are guilty of worrying about stuff that we shouldn't. Mm. Um, we worry about you know money. Yeah. How much money can we make? Uh, how famous can we get? Uh, you know, what 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 legacy will we you know will we leave behind? You know, stuff like that. And I got in my I'm guilty of that sometimes. Yeah. And he taught me mainly all the time is that if you truly love, you know, the craft and the art form of acting, you don't really have to worry about any of that stuff because if you if you give it your all, if you love what you do, all of that other stuff will come. You know, mm-hmm. the money will come, the notoriety will come. I mean, you'll get, uh, uh, you know, the, the fruits of labor that you always wanted from your, from the work that you do. So, you know, I'm in, in, I don't know. I used to always worry about that stuff. But yeah. after you kept telling me, you know, if you just love what you do and work at it all the time, all of that stuff that you want will all come. Mm. You know, it, it, it sometimes in this business, you know, it's a great business, you know, but at the end of the day, it's still a business, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, corporations, uh, production companies, they sometimes look at you as a number and try to see how much money can they make for a project, and that kind of takes the fun out of just being an actor. So if you kind of leave that alone, you know, all of that other stuff will come. Okay, cool.
cool, cool. Last but certainly not least, what advice can you offer to any young person? Because, you know, you were talking about entering the industry at a very young age and, you know, getting trained formally and things of that nature. What advice can you offer to any young person that aspires to be an actor? Well, I think that the, the main thing I would have to say for them is um, patience. I think mm-hmm. it's the, you know, the main one. Yeah. Um, you have to have patience, man, because, God, uh, mm-hmm. this business sometimes can take so long to get into. And sometimes, you, and another thing, you have to be mentally strong. Yeah. Because some days, you know, as the actors, we deal with such rejection all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, in auditions, you're going to get told no more than you get told yes. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to always have the confidence in yourself to believe that you're going to be able to do this because uh, you're going to get told no a lot. And, you know, as an average, you know, I don't think there's nobody that gets told no more than an actor. Um, so, and, and it makes you feel insecure, insecure. You know, you can sometimes be in your bed, sometimes worrying, like, uh, why am I doing this? Mm. You know, because every time you know, I would get, I would be so close to booking movies, yeah. big stuff. And I, and I don't get it, and I'll be so pissed. Mm. And sometimes I think that I'll get, I want to be able to go. I'm like, I should probably just play football. I want to <laughs> go back and play football. I want to go back. And it's so funny, right? When you, I start to think that at the perfect moment, that's when I ended up booking this this mm. thing away after this move. So you know, everything <laughs> works in perfect timing, and I think that as human beings, we try to rush and make decisions when things aren't going right away. So you just have to be. I know it sounds you know, cliche and always be patient. And I always, when people used to tell me that, I used to always like, you know, let it go from one end to the other because I'm like, I don't want to hear that. That's what mm-hmm. everybody says. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't understand until you really, when you finally book your first job, you kind of really think about like, geez, thank God I had this because what if I left out on this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Charles La Jr., thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate those little nuggets of knowledge that you've dropped on the audience definitely appreciate that and we will be checking you out on the way back march the 6th yes it's coming up it's around the corner all right i see that much more success to you much more success to you and your team everybody that's backing you this movie is going to be phenomenal and i just definitely appreciate each and every one of you guys for all of your love and support keep in mind anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do you look them square in the face you tell them don't believe me just watch Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is way, way better. Until next time, you guys.